on today's join of the week or year or month. How long has it been since I've done one of these? We're gonna do what I like to call shadow dovetails. It's a really cool inlay 3D effect for dovetails. These are kind of the style I normally do with the line that sort of zigzags throughout but these create a really cool 3D effect I really like. Now, why do we practice joinery? Joinery is so important for the skills in woodworking that you need in a pinch. All of us, you know, with a little bit of practice can get pretty good at using power tools. You know how they're gonna react, you know how to make them go straight, but it's when you get into the fine details of joinery or finishing a project, or you need to solve a problem that a power tool can't do safely for you, these are the skills that we practice so that when we need them, we can do them with efficiency and you learn things like, you know, fine pairing with a chisel or using a marking knife correctly or how to, you know, make a small cut with a saw. So I like to do joinery on a regular basis. It's actually been a little while since I've cut dovetails, so hopefully I'm not too rusty. Uh, but let me show you how to cut these 3D shadow dovetails. So to do this, we're gonna start with, we'll call these the sides of our box and then our inlay material. The great thing about doing these types, if you're gonna do all four corners of a box, you can sort of use one piece of inlay material and just once you attach it, you can just chop it off uh, before you do glue up, makes it really easy. And I'll show you how to trim it here in a minute. But with, as with, always with dovetails, you label your outsides and you label your corners that go together because it's real easy to lose track. Everything's gonna sort of look the same when you cut four sides of a box. So you wanna make sure you label everything. I like to do an O for outside and then you know I'll do a triangle and a square and opposing corners, yada, yada, yada. So we're gonna go ahead and set our marking gauge. And you're gonna do that to the width of the mating piece, we'll call this uh, tails. So we're gonna do a little T and then pins, we'll do a little P over here, a little TP for you. And then we're gonna set our marking gauge to the width of our board, which is really easy to do. Now on your first board that you're gonna cut, you're gonna have half tails. Now both of these are gonna have tails, but you're gonna wanna mark the outsides of your board on the piece that is not your inlay. So your body piece, your main piece, we're gonna mark the outsides. Uh, and then we're going to do a nice, mellow, not too deep line across the board on both sides. And that's gonna be our depth line. Now it seems counterintuitive that you're going to do a board that will end up, whoop, Cat's Moses dovetail jig on the ground didn't break because they're indestructible. <laughs> Sorry, they're made out of the same material as pool balls. So I'm always impressed at how high they bounce when they hit the ground. Uh, so we're gonna make our marking gauge line we're gonna lay out our tails here. There are a million ways to lay out dovetails. You can split it evenly by dividing by a certain number, draw your lines in pencil, and then go at equal distance out from those measurements, depending on what you want. But here's a super easy way. And you know how I find this uh, this measurement out is trial and error, is I just set it to uh, you know width somewhere around one inch and then open and close them uh, on like a piece of scrap and off cut from when I was squaring these up. So you open your dividers, these are, set at one and three eighths. And I just, you go right against the edge of your board, make a nice hole, and then you just walk them down your board like so until you can't, you're not gonna hit board anymore. And then you take it out and you push it against the edge of your board, make another hole just like this. And there you go, and that's gonna be your half pins on the side. So you can see our half pin is just about uh, three eighths away from the edge. And then all of our pins, although this first cut is gonna be tails, you'll see in a second, are all about three eighths apart from each other. And then the way to easily do this is you're gonna take your marking knife and you, this is one of the reasons why this is such a great technique is because you have these little pinholes here. So you can just put the tip of your knife in and slide it up. And the reason you slide up to your marking knife and don't put your ruler down first, it's really hard to get it accurately, but if you have a reference point with your marking knife that it's already in, you can slide right up to it and it's really easy. Now, if you want like a serious walkthrough on dovetails, I have a great video. It's gonna be linked in your top right-hand corner, that little eye. Uh, it's going to be called a comprehensive guide to cutting dovetails. And I go walk you through step by step on how to cut them. I tell you all the tips and tricks I know. Uh, and if you, this is something you want to learn, uh, it's just a matter of practice. I guarantee, you know, by your third set, you're going to be really happy with your progress. But it is important to just go slow, follow the tips, follow the, the order of operations. Uh, and just keep trying. You don't want to get frustrated after one time because you don't cut perfect dovetails because this is a uh, 
it's a hard skill, but it's honestly dovetails are one of those things that if you can cut dovetails, you can do just about anything with hand tools. So highly recommend you practice them. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and cut our first set of tails. We're gonna cut right down to our line, not past. We're gonna be using a folding Dazuki saw and a Cat's Moses dovetail jig. Both of these are available in my store. Now, the thing you wanna remember when you're cutting with any saw is it's sort of like you're shooting pool, but you're, you've moved your arm down 90 degrees. So you wanna just be a pendulum, move back and forth. Uh, if you, one thing that I used to do is I would practice cutting a few times before I ever started cutting. And then when you do it, you take your saw and one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they try and put their jig at the line and then slide their saw over to it. Now that's a problem for a couple of reasons. One, all saws have tooth set. Even something as fine as this Dazuki here is gonna scratch the face of your jig. But two, it's really hard to get in the exact right place. Because saws have tooth set, meaning they're wider than the actual body of the, the blade, they actually have a left and right side. It's not like, I mean, dovetails, you really wanna get in the right place. So you can just take, using your, your thumb or a finger, you can place the, the left side of the teeth right in that line and then just using my finger, I do just a little bit of a backward stroke here. And that gives me just a little bit of a groove. And then I can slide my jig up to it, just like we were talking about with the marking knife. And then we're just going to very gently, you let the weight of the saw do the work. And we're going to cut down to our marking knife line. So we're going to go ahead and cut all these out and uh, montage through it. And then we'll start talking when we start clearing out some weights. want save your sawdust it's a great filler later when you're doing your glue up so you can fix any mistakes because we all know we're not perfect all right now you saw with my coping saw I got as close to the line as I could one little trick is you always want to cut with your face facing the outside part of the board because the inside matters a lot less so that way you know if you screw up on the backside like you go too low that's fine because as long as you stay above the line on the outside face of the board you can now we're going to go ahead and cut our shoulder side there's a shoulder side on the jig which also works as a 90 degree guide uh we're just going to put in our vise and do the exact same thing we did before now on this one if you're feeling you know like you want to give yourself a little bit more room for success you can take a chisel and make a little relief cut that goes right up to your marking gauge line and that will help you get your saw in the right spot this is a kind of a more visible part of a project is either the top or bottom corner so you might want to take a little bit of extra care when doing this for me i just do the same thing i, I just do a little bit of a backward stroke here and just try and land right in that line and then i take my 90 degree shoulder side slide up to that and you just want to go slow if the saw is coming away from your jig like you're seeing gaps up here while you're sawing you're probably just sawing too fast you need to just slow down and let the magnets do their work instead of trying to force it and you can see i like to stay just a little bit away from my line uh that way I can come back with the chisel and clean it up if I want. We're gonna do the other side here and clean these up with a chisel. Now when you're chiseling, basically you wanna keep taking half of what's there. If you have a lot left, take half, take half until you can't take half anymore. And then you put your chisel right in that line. If you try and take too big of a bite with a chisel, what happens is because of this bevel, you know, it's gonna push it backwards. So you wanna make sure that uh, you're taking as little bit of, of a bite as possible, because uh, otherwise it's gonna push it backwards into your marking gauge line, and then you're gonna get unintended gaps in there later. All right, couple quick chisel tips before we get into the next piece. There's a term called seeing 90. And what you do is you put your chisel in the line and you can feel the line. You'll like feel it click with your marking gauge line. You make sure you're all the way in there. 
and then you close one eye and you'll see the chisel line up with the marking gauge line and that's called seeing 90. And you basically want to be able to, as you look down it, the marking gauge line should disappear on both sides for you and that should be 90 degrees. Now there's no harm in undercutting just a little bit on your last pass because the most important part to do here is you take a square uh, and you're gonna go across the inside of your tail. You wanna make sure that on the outside of your board, it never gets lifted up. And if it does, you need to clear that out. Now, the great part about dovetails, if you look in here, in the middle here, nobody's ever gonna see that. That's always gonna be covered by wood. And the only parts that matter are the very, very outside faces. And that's why uh, you wait to clear out your waist with a chisel until you get really low is because that first cut's real crisp. But if you have like something in here that's lifting your square up, when you do the, the little back and forth check, you can literally just dig that out with just about anything. I usually just take a small chisel and just scoop the middle very carefully with my hands. Let me show you how I do that. I've got this little piece right here and I pinch it real tight like a brake. And then I just kind of scoop it out just like that. And that gets rid of any hump. And because I'm holding it real tight, it makes sure that I don't slip through and blow out the other side. So it doesn't matter on the inside of your tails. It doesn't matter in the middle here. Just the very edge is where you want to keep that real nice and crisp. Now here's a great example of why you check with a square. I was just checking this shoulder and you can see this gap right here. There's a little bit of a low spot and it looks like I might've gone a little bit wonky with my chisel when I did this side. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm not going to go any deeper here, but I'm going to take some off over here and that should help from when I attach these boards. What the reason you get gaps is you usually have like a little hump in the middle. So that should get rid of that. And then if there's anything left, any residual of that, like one, one twenty eighth uh, of a gap, I'll put a little sawdust in there. It should just fix it right up. But it's a good thing I checked because this would have caused a pretty significant gap if I didn't pull this side of the chisel off. You can see in the back here, I didn't even get down to my marking knife line here. So I need to do a little bit more work there and keep checking it with my square to make sure I get it right. All right, so now that we've cleaned up our first set of tails, we're gonna cut our second set of tails in our mating board. Now this is where you wanna be right here. So you wanna make sure you label the outsides of your boards. You've already labeled this one. And then you want to use your marking gauge, which should be set to the same depth as before. Uh, and if you milled these all up together, they should be the same thickness, but you can check, make sure. Now on this board, you don't have to do a half. You don't have to do it on the side. So we're just going to do the faces of these boards. Now, the way these are going to mate is like this. So we've got both our outsides facing up. And remember, we talked about the outside being the most important part of our board. So that's the one I took the most care to clean up with chisel. So we're gonna actually mark them out the other way. We'll flip them both over to the backs. And you can even, if you need to, just to keep them aligned later when you're cutting, uh, you can sort of just label those two corners. And we're gonna slide that right up to our marking knife line. Now I'm using the opposite board because it's the exact same thickness as our inlay board, just for support here. And a great way to ensure these line up is you want I so I have like a little fence in my vise here and that just helps me stay lined up and now I have a reference edge that all my boards go against. But a great little trick for lining these up is you just take kind of a, a bigger chisel. You can find your marking knife line, stand it up, find 90 like we talked about before. Uh, but it's real easy to do because you can just tell is the chisel touching both sides there. And it is. So I know that I am right up to that line without going over. And if you look from the side, the very edges of your board should be just about lined up. I can tell I slipped a little bit there. And you wanna triple, double, quadruple check that. If you want, you can clamp things down now or you can uh, live wildly. So we're just gonna go ahead and lightly, lightly mark those out. And you wanna make sure the most important part is the inside corners because you need to mark out the top of the board which is where you're gonna be sawing from. So you want to make sure that you get a nice little mark in there and that's going to help us put our square in the right place here in the next step.
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut these out the same way as before. We've got our marking gauge line. I've marked out my waist so I know I'm cutting on the right side of the line. You always wanna cut on the waist side. So when you place your saw on the line, make sure that you're cutting on the waist side. And then, you know, you saw me, I cut all of them that go, because I'm right-handed, I cut all the ones that go this way, and then I flip the board and I cut all the ones that go this way. And I just find that's a little bit easier than trying to like reverse hold everything and do that. So uh, let's get these cut out. Uh, if you want to check your work before you move forward, uh, make sure you have both outsides facing out. Make sure your ones are on the same side. Uh, and then you can put it back on top and just put some pencil in there with your little fence system and make sure everything sort of lines up with your top mark if you want to do some more checking. But we're going to throw caution to the wind. I know in a future clip I'll probably be telling you how I shouldn't have done that. But screw it. We're going for it, baby. Cat's Moses style. Let's get to cut. Using my jig, it's very rare to have a half tail. So in this one specific type of dovetail, it's the only one you have to do it with, you do need a support board here on the end. And so you can just take one of your other pieces because it's the same thickness. Just make sure they're the same height. Tighten it in there and then you just cut it the same way. Last thing before we start chiseling and cleaning these up, you can see I missed my marking knife line here, but it's in the waist side, which is if you're gonna miss, you wanna end up in your waist, and that's why you always really take a lot of care to put the correct side of your saw in the line, because if you miss, you're most likely gonna end up on the waist side. So we'll be able to just clean that up with a chisel. You can actually even use the guide to stick your chisel to it and that can help you get the perfect angle. All right, so we're gonna uh, montage through cleaning these out with the coping saw and the chisel and then we will talk again when we uh, start fitting these up. These are really, really close to fitting and you can sort of pull it away from the line a little bit and see like where you're going to be real tight. Most of them are pretty close except this one where I missed the line here. It looks like we missed on both sides. Um, so I just draw a little pencil line where I need to shave a little bit and then I'll just shave it with the jig here and then just keep testing. You just want to go real slow and work your way up to a really good fit. All right, it looks like it's gonna probably go here. A couple tips for glue up. One, you wanna trim this. We're gonna trim it real close, like an eighth inch away from our marking gauge line here, but you wanna trim it a lot more because we're gonna put a little clamping pressure this way as well as a call to keep it down. Dovetails tend to pull each other together, but a little clamping pressure isn't gonna hurt. Also, you wanna put your softest wood in from the top. Uh, with your outsides facing up because whatever wood is softer is going to potentially take damage from the other wood as they go together if there's some tight spots. So you want to put your softer wood in from the top, ladies, gentlemen, and just put it together. We're going to trim this, clamp this way, clamp down so it stays flat, and this would be the time to spread any sawdust in to, to fill in any gap. So make sure you have that in. All right, we got our glue up done. A little bit eventful. We got a crack right here, which happens sometimes when you're doing dovetails, especially when you're doing a harder wood with a softer wood. But the easiest thing is it usually splits along a grain line. This is really figured walnut. It's not very straight grain, so uh, it has more of a tendency to split. But it usually splits, so as soon as you see that crack, all you do is throw some glue in there, and then when you squeeze it together, nobody will ever, ever see it. It's important you let it dry all the way before you do your next set of inlays, because then you have a tendency to reopen you know, if the glue hasn't cured. So I'm gonna give this a full 24 hours to dry and then we're gonna trim this off and cut some uh, pins and tails again.
Now it's time to mark out a new set of tails. Now usually with my magnetic jig or any magnetic jig, uh, you don't need to mark out down the board, but we want everything to be exactly an eighth inch thick. And so to do this easily, all I'm gonna do is take an angle gauge and set it to the exact angle of my jig, just like that. And now I'm gonna measure in an eighth from each edge of the walnut or your inlay board. And then I'm gonna draw up directly from there. So you can mark it out with just a pencil or a marking knife. And this is gonna give us a nice even inlay all the way around. So I'm gonna mark these out and then cut these tails and we'll check back in when it's time to do some pins. All right, it's time to mark out our pins. We got this, this is looking killer. And it's time to mark it out. We're gonna use uh, a jig that I saw on my website called a dovetail alignment board. There's a million ways to do this. A lot of times people will put a plane on their workbench and then level that with these, but this makes it really easy because you have a reference. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so the way this works is it has two fences that are coplanar. So they're in the exact same plane. And the reason this is great is if you slip or move, it gives you a reference. So you put your board that you're going to mark and you make sure it's flat up against your fence of your dovetail alignment board here. And then you just lock it in. And now it's really easy to just take your piece and it slides up against that same fence. You know that your two pieces are perfectly aligned. And that way, if when you're marking you move, you can go back to exactly where you were. So we've got this and we know it's the fence is right because these two are perfectly even. So we're gonna just make sure that this comes to the very back of the board. And then we're gonna just take a marking knife, hold it flat against the tail and just mark it out. Let's see, I moved a little bit there. I can go back right to where I was. I forgot to say, I never ended up cutting a rabbit in this because I didn't have to thin this board out very much. So for our marking gauge, we're just gonna do the full depth of this board. But if you did cut a rabbit in this piece, make sure you account for it when you're doing your marking gauge line. We're gonna go ahead and put our marking gauge line here. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut ourselves some pins. I want to give you guys a quick tip that I, I've never said on camera before, but I use it so subconsciously. It's such a part of what I do here. So when you're chiseling, obviously your chisel is never as wide as the socket unless you're the luckiest dovetailer alive. So when I've cleared out some, I get some on the edges. And you've seen me when I'm doing this, I press it against here and then I clear it out down the line. But what I always do is I take my finger and I press the flat of the chisel against the part that I already chiseled because what tends to happen when you have material that you're removing here and it's a smaller size than the chisel is the chisel twists when you hammer or push down because of the bevel. Um, it likes to push back, but there's nothing pushing this back here. So when I'm doing that and I'm clearing the last little bit, you see me all the time I put my finger on it and I get it in that marking knife line and then I just press down and that gets that last little bit. So that's why you see me always with my hand on the chisel. Now be careful, obviously, when you got your fingers in there, but just like that, and it clears that last little bit. All right, back to the montage. All right, so we are so close to fitting here. And you saw me use this, this is like a Japanese file, I've, like a hundred year old one I found on Etsy. But any file where the bottom doesn't cut is great. And you can like very, very fine tune 
pins and tails if you need to. I, I never mess with tails, but on pins, I get real detail oriented on them because what can happen is it looks like it's gonna fit and then you hammer it home and the whole thing splits apart and your, your project's ruined. So here's the things I check. I check and make sure that my tails are square. So I take a look at them. Uh, and because what happens is they may be more open on top. When you hammer it home, it gets tighter and tighter and then things start to split. You know, the way you want dovetails to fit is they don't, you don't want them so tight that you can't just like sort of wiggle them on pretty easily in the beginning. Cause once you add glue, everything's gonna expand. So it should feel like a very light pulling of a rubber band when you're pushing it down. So I go through and I check all these. And then of course I check from the, the front of the board and make sure that uh, I don't get hung up on anything. In fact, the edge of your square can sometimes clear out any little junk. Um, and I just make sure that the inside edge here of my square is always touching, check my pins, and then I do a final fit up. So we're real close here. So we're gonna head over to the uh, glue up table and, and put this bad boy together. It came out so good. I, the bird's eye maple and maple and walnut together. I mean, that's like milk and cookies. That's just the best combo ever. Um, last little piece of like advice I'd give you is uh, of course, practice joinery. Like I talked about in the intro, it just makes a difference in your skills. Uh, and it, it just transfers across every single type of thing you can do in woodworking. Uh, but the last piece of advice I'll give you is nobody's joinery looks perfect before you put finish on it. Like there's always little imperfections and you can see a teeny little gap here and there. But once you get finish on it, all that just goes away. Finish is like the ultimate equalizer. It, it just, it makes it look beautiful. So uh, don't get frustrated when you're practicing your joinery and put finish on every single one of your practice pieces. Just throw finish on it. I'm telling you, it's going to blow you away the difference. It, it just will make you feel better about your skills. Cause you know, my stuff's not perfect. It never is, but everything looks really great unless you get out a microscope and, and take a peek at it. So the difference between amateurs and pros in this are we just know how to fix our mistakes better and that's all. We all make them, we make them constantly and that's the fun of woodworking is like you always learn and you're always overcoming something new. So I highly recommend you try. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, I put a little discount code for a dovetail jig if you wanna try this down in the pinned comment. Uh, so head over to my website, I've never done that before. So. Uh, take advantage of it. It'll only be good for about three days, but I, I really, I want you to try. So if you haven't yet, give it a go. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.